thank you again, Kasim, for joining us. Um, can you just take a quick moment? I know I know you personally, but I want the audience to really get to know you as um, an artist manager and for everything that you do in the industry. So can you just take a moment to quickly introduce yourself to the audience? Yeah, absolutely. I'm Kasim Peterson, uh, Digital Marketing Director for Maybach Music. Um, I work with several brands such as uh, Rock Nation, Epic Records, Atlantic. Um, I have my own marketing agency called Crown Creative. I started my own label, uh, Crown Music, who has distribution through uh, Equity Distribution, which is Rock Nation Distribution Company. Nice. So you're doing some really cool stuff, but I want to start at the very beginning. Like, how did you get into the music industry? Because I know you were a mixtape DJ in the beginning. Now you're more on the business side. So how did you get started with everything? Um, so my journey started um, in high school, actually. Um, I started uh, making beats. Um, like... This is like 2000, I want to say 2003, 2004. And um, it was cool enough to the fact that one of my friends, um, he actually was an A&R for Universal. And he actually got me into like a production development deal or whatever they call it. And um, it didn't really amount to much. It was just cool, you know, just to say I had it. Um, so we had that for a while. And then one day in particular, um, he called me up to the office in New York. And I went up there and we had a cool conversation. And in that conversation, he told me to not everybody's gonna buy your beats. So you have to find a way to, you know, bro, to remain relevant within the industry. Mm -hmm. So on the drive back to Virginia from New York, um, I'm listening to satellite radio and uh, DJ Who Kid, his show was on. And I love how he was able to translate that mixtape format onto radio. So I was like, this is what I wanna do. So I get back home and I start doing research immediately. And then from there, um, I go back to New York and I actually run into DJ Enough. And, you know, I'm talking to DJ Enough. He's giving me a lot of great advice um, as far as like being a DJ, as far as the mixtapes. One of the, one of the greatest things he told me was, um, you know, you got to make sure that your presentation is on point. Like the covers are everything. And so I started doing my research because I never, at that time, I had never heard of like the graphic designer profession at all. Mm -hmm. So um, this was in I, high school, right? Right, right. I had just graduated high school. Wow. So. so so I get back so from New York and then I actually go to Best Buy and I bought like the little BS copy of Photoshop. It was called Photoshop Elements. <laughs> <In 65. laughs> so I taught myself Photoshop. And then from there I just, you know, started dropping mixtapes. Um I have to develop more relationships with uh like different artists and their um managers, different A and R's, different producers. So I was dropping mixtapes like every week. So that's how, you know, that got me into that. And then from there, um, I got recruited by Slip and Slide Records. They had a mm -hmm. DJ called, called Slip and Slide DJs. And then I got recruited um, probably like the next month by Coast to Coast Mixtape DJs. Wow. Yeah. And so just building up my network, um, going from there. And then um, in the middle of that, um, I was just on Twitter one day, and the guy named G5, shout out to him, um, he reached out to me. He was like, yo, you, you looking for another opportunity? And I was like, well, what do you mean? <laughs> he was like, nah, I got an um, opportunity for you, you know, to work with us over at Dipset. And um, I was like, yeah, cool. I, I was a fan of Dipset at the time. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, he introduced me to Hell Rail. So I basically was working directly on the Herald Rail to care of all his marketing needs, or social media needs, I should say. Um, early, this was right when like social media was taking over, right when Instagram first started. Mm -hmm. So I became really more attracted to the business side at that point. Um, you know, fast forward, um, Dipset broke up for the second time. That's how I started my own, my own graphic design company. And then fast forward some more. Uh, this is what, 2016, I'm on Instagram one day and I'm seeing um, my guy B. Ben in there, shout out to him too. Mm -hmm. And he just started his label called Ben Dollar Market. And he was signing artists from the city. But the artwork that he put up at the time was like ridiculous. It was the worst <laughs> I've ever <laughs> It was the worst. And as a designer, I can't stand bad graphics. Mm -hmm. So I, I redesigned it and I sent it to him. I was like, what's up, bro? This is for you. Like, you're from the city. We can't have you go out like this. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, oh, man, I appreciate it. This work is great. This is clean. This is what I needed. Like, let, let's, let's talk. So he sent me his number. So we got on the phone. Um, 
and we talked for maybe like a couple of hours. And, you know, we knew a lot of people mutually between, you know, the streets and the industry. Mm -hmm. and, um, he invited me to come down to Atlanta. And that's a crazy story within itself after that. Wow. So, <laughs> yeah. you, had, so you had a very interesting start because you originally started on more of the artist creative side. Mm -hmm. And then you completely switched over to the business side do you ever wish that you'd like or do you ever wish that you had stayed with the mixtape dj route absolutely, absolutely not <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was so much that came with that it was like you know having to to constantly be on like the latest of everything mm -hmm. and um i slightly got caught up in that same little realm with dj drumming them when the, mm -hmm. the RA started cracking down mm -hmm. like, I remember that piff kept sending me cease and desist from them. It was crazy. And they found me. Yeah, they, and RA found me 10,000 at one point, too. Jeez. They pulled, whole, they pulled the whole project down and, and it sent the fine. I said, sheesh. It, it wow. Was yeah. So then you, so you started doing all this graphic design and I know your story about Rick Ross. You said that he just, you randomly connected with him just from being a part of this this network that you had, right? Yeah, so with that, um, so with B being there, he had took me to his house. Um, it, and it was a wild day because I was supposed to come back home to Virginia. Mm -hmm. I was actually gonna get on the bus to come back home. And so, um, with, like, I would say like maybe like an hour before we, um, I was supposed to go to the bus station. Mm -hmm. was like, I want you to go somewhere. So I'm like, cool. So we, we driving for like, for mad long. Mm -hmm. Like, dang, bro, bro, like, for all that, you can send me to the bus station. <laughs> like, <"That's laughs> so we uh, we drive probably like five more minutes, and then we turn into this community, and it's a, a gated community. Mm -hmm. Keep cold, and then, you know, the gates open up, so we drive down, and then we end up in this cul-de-sac, and in this cul-de-sac at the end, there is a, um, a house with a gate with two R's on it. So in my head, I'm like, all right, I know what's going on here. So the gates open up, uh, we go inside the house. And I see plaques everywhere. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I really know what's going on. <laughs> so we go downstairs in the basement, and that's Ross House. Um, and in that basement, it's like, like at the time, yeah, it was like two studios down there. Like two full studios. It was crazy. Wow. Yeah, so um, so I get to, you know, to meet the, you know, the, the team. Um, one guy in particular, uh, his name is Tomcat, who's uh, Ross Engineer, also his right hand. Mm-hmm. He's also a designer as well. So I'm showing him my work. And he was like, man, your work is great. And I tell you what, though, if you sit down in that chair right there, when Ross comes downstairs, I guarantee he's going to want to work with you. So I'm like, yeah, right, whatever. <laughs> Everybody's always chatting about something. Yeah. But I still sat in the chair. <laughs> I <still sat> in. <laughs> so I was sitting in the chair and I'm working on some other stuff. And um, about five minutes later, Ross walks downstairs. And then, um, you know, we greet each other. Then he looks over my shoulder. And he goes, um, you're doing that? I'm like, yeah. And then he goes, um, I got something for you. Um, go in that, that studio right there and tell him play the song I just did and see what you can come up with. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I listen to the record and um, and I knock it out. I knock the artwork out in like five minutes. Wow. Did yeah. you, were you nervous at all? Nah. You That's just... one thing about me. I don't know how to be nervous. I don't know how to, I don't know how to be nervous. I don't know how to panic. So whatever situation, I just had, I just handle it head on. Did you ever have those nerves, or, or I mean, have you ever ha had any circumstance where you were nervous, like even when you were mix a mixtape DJ? Nah, uh, no, nah, not at all. Um, the only time I can say I was nervous was like when my son was born. That was the first time I was nervous. <laughs> but anything beyond that, like, nah. That's reasonable. <laughs> um, cool. Well, so now you're working on something that I think is is really cool and um i know I, I said this to you before the call but i want the audience to know that the reason why i asked you to come on is because i see a lot of labels out there that do provide financial resources and right, that's right. all that they give but what i love about what you're doing is that you already have the marketing experience so you're right. providing the marketing resources to these artists right so can you talk a little bit about how you decided to start your own label? Well, the thing about it, I, it's, it wasn't something I per se decided to do. It was the idea mm -hmm. that was presented to me. Um, the story behind that was I was at Audio Mac um, in Manhattan, 
And then um, I was having a conversation with the head of marketing over there. His name was um, Jason Johnson. Mm-hmm. And I was talking to his, um, his boss, his name, uh, David Ponte. And so, you know, we were just talking about marketing. We were talking about the industry, you know, different things that Audi Mac was doing. Um, and in the middle of that conversation, Jason stops me. He says, let me ask you something. He says, you have all these resources. You have all these connections. You know a lot of people, and they're all the right people. Like, why don't you have uh, your own artists that you're pushing? Why don't you have your own label yet? And, and David says, why? yeah, that's right. Why don't you? And I was like, oh, shit, like, I'm not sure. <laughs> I never thought that far ahead of it. And he was said, he said to me, um, you should really, like, consider that. You should really do it because you have everything you need. And um, David goes, yeah, you should. I, I feel like you should. Like, you know, your family to us or whatever you need from us, we got you. So I say, um, yeah, just let me think about it. Like, I, you know, I don't just do things just for the sake of doing it. It just has to make sense. Mm-hmm. So um, I get on the train to go back home. And I'm in, I live in Queens, so it takes an hour from the city mm-hmm. to Queens. So on the train, I'm thinking about it. And it's on my mind so much, it kept me up, like, the entire night. <laughs> so about 6 o'clock the next morning, it clicked and it made sense. Like, it really made sense. So I'm like, yeah, I, I definitely want to go ahead and pursue this. So um, so I go back the next day, or that same day, well, now it's 6 o'clock more, so I go back probably, like, 10 o'clock. And I tell him, like, I think I want to go ahead and pursue this for real because, um, you know, you're right. I should do it. It does make sense. And he goes, yeah, I, I, I knew that. So, like, what, again, whatever you need from us, we got you. I said, all right, cool, bet. So the next day, which is Friday, um, I'm doing a press run with um, a guy named HB, the engineer. He's a phenomenal engineer from uh, Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, he's well, at that point, too. He was on his DJ Callaway. So he was putting together this in, like, this incredible project with all these big names. And so we was doing press for it. So uh, my guy, Title, he calls me that morning. And he says, um, yo, Nas is up here. This is the same day Nas dropped his album. He said, Nas is up here. We didn't even know who's coming. But um, we may have to like reschedule or push you back. So I'm like, all right, cool. Just let me know. And so, um, you know, we go throughout the day, hit different out- outlets. And so um, it gets late, late in the afternoon, probably like 2 yeah, I want to say like two o'clock. I like I looked at the time like, oh, I, I really gotta get bro up there. So um, so I make a call to Christian. He's the president of Equity. Mm-hmm. And at the time, uh, we never like met in person. We had always done business over the phone via text, email. We had never met in person. Mm-hmm. And um, so I called him. I said, hey, Chris, like I have this artist who I feel like would be a great addition to what you guys have going on with Equity. And he says to me, um, now, normally we don't have artists up here we haven't signed yet. However, I do want to meet you. So I'm like, oh, snap. So um, they were driving. So you, you already know how crazy traffic is in New York. Mm-hmm, yep. <laughs> to get from the audio back office we were at the time to the Rock Nation office, by car would have been like 30, 40 minutes. I just hopped on the first bus I saw and took it over there. It got me there at five. Wow. <laughs> I told them just meet me there. So I knew it was going to be a while before they got there. Mm-hmm. So um, so I get there. As I'm walking in the building, the Rock Nation building, he's actually walking down. And so um, we greet each other in the lobby, and then we go up to his office. So we get it, we get it to the office, and then, um, you know, the same comes. I always have everybody else. We're talking about marketing. We're talking about the industry. Um, he's telling me everything equity has going on at the time. Um, and then he said, tell me more about what you have going on. So I tell him about, you know, everything I have going on in MG. Um, tell him everything I had going on with planes at the time. Um, tell him about this other thing I have called Indie Impact, which they definitely want to be a part of. We were supposed to be this year, but due to Corona, that kind of threw mm-hmm. everything. Um, and so, it, it, you know, as we're talking, it clicked into me that, oh, snap, that he knows the, the people over Audio Mac. So I tell him about the conversations we just had, uh, you know, the other day. Mm-hmm. And as I'm t- telling him about it, his, his stance changed. He went from like being engaged and now he's like in a hmm, let me think about this. And so um so I asked him like what you I mean, what you think about it? He was like, You should do it. Like you think so? He said, No, I know so. Like you have everything you need. Mm-hmm. I don't, a reason why you wouldn't do it. And then I was like, Yeah, just something that's just an idea right now. And he was like, You should really do this for real. And then he started, you know, moving some papers around his desk. And then he slides a certain stack towards me. He said, like, 
we'll give you a label deal right now. Like, you should do it. We'll give you a label deal. And I was like, oh, snap. Like, this is too fast. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> fast. Now, think about it. Like, I didn't even have a name. Yep. It was just an idea. And mm -hmm. then, it was always, what? At this time, it was like 24 hours now. So, that got presented to me 24 hours. So, um. Was that list last year? Yeah. Like, what? That was August. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That did move really quickly. Real quick. Yeah, it was August, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. So then, uh, that Sunday, um, Chinese Kitty, she had a release party for uh, like two videos she had dropped. Mm -hmm. So I go to that event, and as I'm there, my guy Rain, um, he's there. So uh, Rain, we had already have a great relationship. Um, he does a lot. Of, he did a lot of stuff with us at MMG. Um, he did a lot of stuff with Jim Jones. He did. He worked with Dre. He worked with a lot of people. He's a phenomenal producer, phenomenal recording artist. So he's dead. So I'm telling him about everything that just transpired over the last few days. And then he was like, yo, bro, like, you know, I have my little fast die young thing. I've been trying to like do something with it. We should do something together. And I was like, bro, like that makes sense because like, you know, you're a great artist. You're a great producer. I have a ton of like marketing knowledge, <laughs> like together. That's, that's unstoppable. Mm -hmm. And um, he was like, yeah, we, like we should really like do something together. I was like, All right, cool. Let's do it. And so um, the next day, Monday, I thought about some more. I was like, all right, what am I going to call this thing? <laughs> <laughs> and then it, it clicked. Because I wanted to call it Crown Music Group. I didn't, that sounded real, like, cliche to me, the whole music group thing. Mm -hmm. But just when I kept looking at it, it was, like, just Crown Music. It just stuck out. So I just kept it that way, Crown Music. So I signed a contract that day. Jeez. In 24 hours, you yeah. built a record label. Yeah, basically. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. But that takes a lot of courage to to do that because you have done a lot in the, on the marketing side of mm -hmm. of this business, but right. artist management is a whole other beast. That's true. So, how did you start to find your artist, and what was your process for that? Um, when it came to to the artists, uh, it was one artist in particular. Um, that I had my eye on for a while now. Mm -hmm. I did some work with her before. Her name was uh, Camilla Chevelle. She's from Pasadena, California. Uh, she was a background singer for Charlie Wilson and Tedra Moses. Mm. So um, once everything like came into like to shape, I reached out to her, and I totally know what my my intent was. And you know, we made a, we made that work. Um, I don't represent her now. We had a little uh, contract issue. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that was, he was the first one. And then I had another artist, her name was Pusha, King Pusha. She's from uh, New York as well. Uh, she's great. I mean, for her, it was more so a development thing. When mm -hmm. I knew she was get her there, her, like her, like everything about her is amazing. Um, her records were great. Uh, her personality was amazing. Um, yeah, she just all around amazing. Um, then she had some family issues, so we had to pump the brakes on that. Uh, Shice. So I met Shice when I was doing press for Fat Trev uh, last year. Mm. No, 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 not, was it Fat Trev? No, 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 it wasn't Fat Trev. Fat Trev confirmed it for me, but uh, it was actually Young Land, the producer Young Land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I met him doing that um, that press run for Young Land. And, um, you know, from that point, we had clicked real tight. Um, I remember one night we was in Harlem, in the projects in Harlem, and I asked him, like, like what are you really trying to do? Like, what's your goals? And he told me everything he wants to accomplish. Because, like, it's one thing to say, all right, every, everybody wants to be successful. That's that's cool. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, what are you really trying to do? <clears throat> you know, he's talking about his aspirations as well. You know, the movie he had put out a year before, how he wanted to release on a major scale. He just wanted to take everything that he was doing to, like, the highest extent. All right, cool. Um, so I believed in him, like, from the beginning. And, you know, we you know, we said the deal, so it was, like, everything was drawing that level, too. Um, what I have now... Fred C. He's an incredible artist from Kentucky. Mm -hmm. I met Fred through my brother. My brother, uh, Vaughn, he's actually the um, the hip-hop director for the radio station out there, WRFL. Mm. So um, he always kept telling me about this kid, Fred C., Fred C. He was, like, going hard about him. <laughs> <laughs> you got to so, listen to Fred C. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, all right, cool. So I had to do uh, something with the House of Blue. Yeah, I 
the House of Blues Music Four Foundation. I did that in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So on the way back from Chicago, I just stayed in Kentucky for a while. So, you know, just to meet Fred. So I stayed out there, linked up with him. And, you know, we had a great conversation and everything aligned as far as like our goals and what he's trying to accomplish. So, um, so yeah, it just made sense. So we, we added him, uh, what, it's been like a, almost a month now. And how's that going? No, it's going great. We just did a, uh, just released his single called Let Me Know. Uh, we was a part of the whole Team Over Tuesday campaign with Title last week, which is amazing. Um, he's doing pretty well. So I'm sure a lot of um, artist managers could really learn from you because there are a lot of young artist managers that don't even know where to get started. How are you even gaining the the funding for these artists? <laughs> My bank account. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly. Yeah, everything is self-funded right now. And it's crazy. Um, Cause I'm real big on networking. Mm -hmm. And um, I met this lady, uh, wh where was I? I was at the, uh, the, the birthday party of my, uh, my guy, his name is Marquand Smith. Uh, he's the executive producer and creative of um, Godfather Harlem. Mm -hmm. So um, I was at his party and like everybody from like the film industry was there. And this lady in particular, she was there and she worked, she actually works on Wall Street. And um, she was telling me how, you know, there's so many different ways I can get funding for the business. And um, she introduced me to the fact that there are firms that, you know, actually invest into the entertainment industry. I didn't know that. I thought that was like a myth. But <laughs> none of that, firms that really just all they invest in is entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, I actually started a conversation with them uh, late last year. And then, um, you know, Corona. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, a lot of my meetings didn't fall through the way they needed to, but beyond that, like, nah, that's one thing that I'm pursuing next. That's awesome. And I think that's important for a lot of artist managers to understand too, and, and label owners or people who want to start their own labels is that a lot of this is self-funded. And the yeah. reason why it's self-funded too is because like you have so much faith in some of these artists and producers that right. you're willing to put your own money on the line for them. Right, 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 right. And at the end of the day, if you're a bad manager, then you're the one who loses the money. That's true. See, the thing about it, um, by me having like such a strong marketing background, um, I know how to allocate resources. Mm -hmm. So, you know, somebody that's spending like hundreds of thousands of dollars for one thing, I could spend like half of that and still get, you know, the same results or even greater. Mm -hmm. You just have to know how and where to spend that money. You just can't just throw it out there just for sake of throwing it out there. Do you have any tangible advice for someone who's starting off? So say there is an artist manager out there who wants to really build up their first artist. Mm -hmm. And they don't have a lot of money. They're, they're bootstrapping their business too. Um, but they hope to grow their artist into someone who's essentially a superstar in the future. Right. Where should they start off? Like, How do they allocate their money? So say they have 5K in their bank account. Mm -hmm. and, and that's it. How do they start managing? Like, what are some things that they can do to really help grow this artist without a lot of money? Um, the first thing I would say is find somebody who's really, um, really great with the digital marketing. Because that's one of the things I want to always stress. Like, you know, the music is, is one of those things, like, if it's great, it'll sell itself. Um, but beyond that, so oftentimes, the brand is what, you know, lasts longer than the music. Mm -hmm. Even though music is timeless, that'll never go away. But people always attach, you know, who that person was, who that artist was, you know, to a particular record. So um, if you can find someone who's, like, phenomenal in marketing, like, that's the best, like, asset you can have on your team. Just so happen, I'm just that guy. So I already know, like, where I need to, you know, put certain things at. So to have that, uh, if you have a, a, someone who does marketing and also does content, you yeah, never lose because everything that I have, like as far as content, beyond like the videos they do with like different videographers, I create that myself. So I'm already saving money on that level too. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to worry about outsourcing work to another designer. I know I, I take care of it. I don't need a videographer for real. I can do it myself. Did you learn all of that stuff? I know you learned the Photoshop on your own, and you started teaching your graph, graphic yourself graphic design. What right, right, about right. the the videography? How did you get those skills? I'm not like. The, I'm not the greatest like videographer, <laughs> but I know exactly. I know how to point the camera and, and get the results I need. <laughs> mm -hmm. so I myself that. Okay. Years ago, um, 
my barber that I had at the time, he told me, like, yeah, you have a great eye. You should be a photographer. I'm like, yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> so I don't have time for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not your next venture? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I mean, I mean, now, now, I just started a film company uh, last week. Oh, really? Congratulations. Appreciate it, yeah. So exactly. the reason behind that was, um, you know, just what I'm saying with Shice, he had that, uh, that movie that he shot um, mm -hmm. called Trafficker which is based off of um, a project he released in 2018. So, um, yeah, so I started the company just to put that movie out. So it's coming out on Amazon, um, like, in the next few weeks. Wow, so you really believe in in your artists outside of just them making music then? Right, it's more than music. It's way more than music. You act, it sounds like you act kind of as a mentor for them. I try. I mean, for me, it's always you know, just constantly within my purpose. You know, my name's Kasim. It means um, one who divides goods amongst his people. So I'm just playing my part out here. That's it. And what is your big goal? So I know you have all these goals that you're maintaining with your artists. What's the big goal that you have for yourself with your, your brand? Well, as far as the brand? Or your business. just Or or just, yourself. A big, a big goal for yourself. Um... I honestly don't have um, like a specific goal, honestly, because you know it constantly evolves. Because every time, like I think it's one thing, it changes to something else, and then it changes to something else. Because I already took care of that, you know, twice over. So um, now I just want to basically the only thing I want to do right now is focus on just doing what's right. Um, you know, anybody that you know, I have under my wing or in my circle, like I just want to encourage them and develop them to be the greatest versions of themselves. So that's that's pretty much what it is for me. Mm -hmm. Have you had any, well, I'm sure you have, have you, can you name any or talk about some struggles that you've had in the music industry that really taught you about either the music industry or about yourself? Um, patience. That's one of the biggest things because um, I remember me and Ross was having a conversation and um, the way that I was even introduced into the marketing realm, like, when Ross had that conversation with me as far as like doing what I'm doing now for him, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there wasn't an onboarding process. There was no one doing what I was doing for at, the, at that capacity. And so like, I basically was just thrown into the, to the water and, and expected to swim. Um, so like, I had to just figure it all out. And we just had a conversation one day and he told me about how he just wanted to, you know, get something done. I was like, yeah, we can do it tomorrow. He was like, nah, I don't want to do it tomorrow. I want to do it in, in five years. And I was like, huh? He was like, yeah, like, just because we can do it don't mean we have to. It's always great to have something to work towards. Mm -hmm. So um, that stuck with me. So I'm used to, like, you know, being on tight deadlines and just having things done whenever need to be done. And by the same token, it's like it always, it, there's a process to that, and there's levels to that as well. So you don't just want to do things just for the sake of doing it. Like, you have to do it when the time is right. So, yeah, pace was one of the biggest things that um, I learned throughout this entire process. And, um, then, you know, sometimes, yeah, <laughs> there are some times where I just don't have the patience for it because I expect <laughs> results like this. <laughs> I can give them a lot of things done like this, but, you know, when you're, it's contingent upon something else or someone else, like, all right, cool, I just got to, like, wait on that. Mm -hmm. How do you manage your time with everything? Because you have a full-time job. You're working... 40 mm -hmm. plus hours a week for a Maybach music group. And right. then here you are managing all these artists on the side. And now you just started your own film company. How are you right. managing to do all of this at, at once? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I just get it done. Whatever that needs to be done, we just get it done. I, whenever time, it's time to go to bed, we just go to bed when, when it's time. Do you have a team that, that you work with on all of this stuff, especially with your own business that you've got going now? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, for one, my brother, Vaughn, um, not only uh, is he the hip hop director at WRFA in Kentucky, he's also my business manager. Um, he's also a VP. Well, no, he's not VP. He's president of Crown Music. Um, then I have Rain. He's co-CEO of Crown Music. Um, Dev, um, he's VP of Crown Music. Um, he's phenomenal. It's crazy because um, I hired Dev as an intern at Maybach 2017. He was the only one that survived. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> else the highest until they dropped like flies. But he was the only one that survived. So um Dev, he he he's like 
a great story because, like, like I say, he was an intern. I took him on a road with me when I was doing Indie Impact. Um, first, he was just like, um, I had him as just as support, and then that evolved in him being actually like on the panel with me, uh, like then the you know, guest host. It was crazy, like to see him like evolve. He's working with uh, Black Nelson right now too, so wow. um, so yeah, it's great just to have like the hand in so he calls me every day like you know different for advice on different things so yeah, he, he, yeah he's a great set story um and then also my sister um she's a full-time nurse but uh she's like my um my assistant slash secretary slash whatever i need <laughs> she got it so yeah that's that's my my core team have you always been surrounded by people who love music just as much as you do mm, it's crazy i was just having a conversation about that last night really wow yeah. What a coincidence. Yeah. I yeah. promise I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because um, everyone that I was always around growing up um, always went into music in some capacity. And um, even like last night, and I was getting my shape up and stuff, he was saying like, Yo, you always said this is what you're going to do and when no one believes you. I didn't even believe you said it. And I was like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I am now. So yeah, we're talking about that very thing. So yeah, That's everyone, awesome. Yeah, definitely in the music some capacity. Um, we have about 10 minutes left. I was wondering if you could give, if you could leave us with about three pieces of really good advice for either an aspiring artist or mm. producer or anything like that, or um, just someone who really wants to make it in the music industry or even just an artist manager, whichever three pieces of advice you think are going to be really useful. Well, the artist management thing is something I'm still figuring out. So I, I take advice from everybody that I reach out to. <laughs> that's that's a new thing. But um, you always want to make sure that you do what's right. Don't just do things just for the sake of doing it. Um, one thing I live by myself, I don't chase anything. I pursue everything. Um, you know, when you're chasing something, there's more stuff for the thrill. When you're pursuing something, you know it's yours. You just got to go get it. So, um, yeah, that's one of the biggest things. Like, just move up total precision and everything else will fall in place as it should. Nice. And then another piece of advice, maybe something for the aspiring artist. Uh, for an aspiring artist? Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's good. That's a good one. I mean, for an aspiring artist, I would say just keep going. Like you'll never know um, when that that time will come for you. And I've seen so many artists that come into a situation, and you know, because it doesn't work out the way they wanted to work out, they just quit early in the game. But now nah, the light is always there for you. You just got to keep moving towards that. So I always keep pushing. And don't yep. be afraid to network. Don't be afraid to, like, reach out for help. I don't know a lot of people in this whole, like, independence thing, they just want to do things themselves. Like, that's cool to some degree, but there's no glory in that, honestly. Like, nah, everyone that's successful right now is because they have a great team around them or they reach out and network and, you know, everybody to get things on together. So don't be afraid to work. I like the the last this last piece of advice that you gave the keep going because you got the light shining in the background it's a little bit angelic <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> and it goes all, it, like i said before to you you really live up to your name which i think is dope to because i can tell that you care a lot about your artists and i think that's that's yeah. such a big important role for an artist manager to have is they need a manager who's going to stick their neck out for them. Right, right, right. I mean, one thing too, um, you know, there's a lot of conversations about like NR is not developing artists anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's one thing I take dear to me too, because I don't, I don't want any of my um, my roster, anyone on my roster, I should say, to just be in a situation just for the looks. Like now we're going to make sure like you're prepared for this. We do everything we have to do to make sure you're ready for that next level. Because everyone that's on my roster right now, they're not signed directly to me. I didn't want to do that because it didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. I'm too young of a company to have people signing me for years. That's why everybody's on management deals. Nah, I want to make sure we get you to the point where you can just, you know, exceed this and we take it to that next level with someone else. And, you know, that's what it's all about. We don't just want to just throw you out there and just say, huh, I, just because I know I can do it. Like, nah, it's, it's, I, it's easy for me to make a phone call right now. And be like, I got this artist. He's amazing. Let's see what we can make happen for them. We can get a deal like tomorrow. That's that's not the right way to do it. Let's make sure everything is in place the right way. Then we go from there. What are some of those things that they need to make sure are in the right place before they even start looking for a label? 
Uh, and I actually got a whole list. Hold on, let me pull it up for you. Uh, you want to make sure your streaming number is on point. Um, social media engagement is definitely is vital. So you got to make sure that's on point. Um, the like, the follower, the following ratio has to be on point. Um, popularity among your demographics is definitely key. Uh, YouTube views is definitely vital. And also any type of like virability. That's definitely something as well. Um, even on the business side, have a great understanding between your fan base and your consumer base um, because they're definitely not one the same. Um, yeah, because you know the fan base are the ones who really like your music, and they'll do they'll just listen to you, you know, at the drop of a dime. But the consumer base are the ones who really consume everything you have going on. They really rock with you. So you got to make sure that, you know, you cater to the consumer base and then follow up with the fan base because everything works in tandem. Do you have any graphic design advice for some people that are not experienced? Like you would see their graphics and you would just think this is not good. Like how you saw your friend's graphics and, and you said you, you need to really represent yourself better. Any advice <laughs> to that area? If you can't do it yourself, just get somebody who can. <laughs> <laughs> Just get somebody who can't, and it's it's okay. Like I have maybe like I want to say about eight different designers just in my network, and I can reach out to them for like tips or just to prove something that I'm doing. Um, if it's in like a, a smaller party, because anything that's on the man, I got to be on point. But um, but yeah, just you know, just to get that that advice and you know, see what they can add, so they can make it greater. Uh, you know, collaboration and networking is key. Like that's one of the things I've learned through this whole experience. Like that's that's vital, but um, so yeah, if you can't do it yourself, don't be afraid to reach out to somebody else who can, and and don't spend those that dollars with those people in your comments talking about oh we can do tunes and graphics and that. That's scary. Leave it alone. Don't even do it to you. So that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, that's even even myself, I'm not even an artist, and I get hundreds of those. <laughs> yeah, I delete them. I was, I was crazy. <laughs> Um, so lastly, how can, or first, actually, before we finish up with how people can reach out to you, um, yeah. what's something that's coming out that you're really excited about? Mm, it's a lot. Um, it's an album that's coming out that I can't really disclose right now. It's going it's gonna to be amazing. Um, there's a project I have coming up tomorrow with Shice. Um, it's a surprise project, so by the time this interview hits, it's going to be already out. Nice. So, oh, um, that's gonna be phenomenal. Um, yeah, everything I have going on with Crown Music is great. Um, everything that's on the Maybach side, it's, gonna, it's a lot on the Maybach side. I can't disclose it. It's a lot. It's, mm -hmm. gonna, be it's gonna be phenomenal. Um, yeah, that's it for right now. That's awesome. You know, with all the stuff that you have going on, you're still a really big representative for Maybach Music Group and Rick Ross. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Loyalty is a big, big, important thing. Everything. You know. It's everything. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Well, how can people get a hold of you? So say someone does want to ask you for a piece of advice or they want to want you to listen to their music and see if they can get on your label too uh, or mm -hmm. have you as their artist manager. Um, how can people get a hold of you? Um, for submissions, um, I have a cool partnership with Blaze Track. They can send me to there, blazetrack.com forward slash Christine Peterson. Um, is social media crown me king c r w n m e k i n g underscore on ig crown music on ig c r w n music um and then the, my email is on, attached to everything so you just hit me up there now was your instagram crown me king before you started this before you started yeah. your your label uh -huh. and you didn't want to go with crown crown music no <laughs> I mean, because, like, when I did, uh, Crown Me King was, like, I felt like I had to just take myself more serious. So that's why I changed it. Because for the longest, it was just my DJ name, which was DJ Speak Easy. Mm. So it was that for the longest. And then I was like, nah, I just got to, like, really, like, boss up and do things on a higher level. So Crown Me King came into effect. Um, and it's crazy because, like, I had that, that idea while I was working at T-Mobile. I was at my desk. <laughs> and, How long ago was that at? That was so long ago. I quit T-Mobile 2015, honestly. Yeah, I gave them like four and a half years of my life. Wow. Yeah, yeah, because I, I actually got that job. Um, 
right when Dipset like broke up for that second time, I was actually about to do some more work in New York, and I got that call, and I was like, all right, cool. So I always made sure, um, you know, I had a cool plan B just in case, which is the wrong idea to have. Now that I think about it, you always got to make sure your plan A works. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I did that for a while. Um, but yeah, Crime King came in the middle of that. And then when I started my um, graphic design company, at the time it was called 6080 Media. Um, but then, you know, when I rebranded that, I was like, all right, let's, because I felt like at that point, I was at, you know, the pinnacle of everything. So I just crowned creative. So that's what that rebranded came. That rebrand came into play. Um, and so, yeah, so I felt like it was just too much crown. <laughs> and then uh, Elliot Wilson, re he uh, relaunched Crown the series. I was like, oh, yo, mm -hmm. I don't want to be crown music, but it just it just landed. <laughs> so yeah, I just stuck Have you it. ever looked up DJ Speakeasy on Instagram to see who has that, that Instagram handle now? I still have it. <laughs> oh, you do? Yeah, yeah, I still have it. That and, and the Twitter. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> mm -hmm. I made sure of it. Just, in, just in case one day you start promoting your own music again. I still have like all my mixtapes. Wow, we're gonna have to. We're gonna put that in the in the <laughs> video beginning and the end. We're gonna put <laughs> DJ Speakeasy on the track. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Kasim, for joining us today. I'm really appreciative of your time. Yeah.